This is Mary Queen of Scots and in this video I'll be transforming her many portraits using my technology and photoshop skills to see how she might have looked in real life as well as we're going to be diving into her life to see more about who she was so let's get started thank you for watching subscribe for more historical recreations and let me know in the comments who you want to see in real life. Mary Stuart, known as Mary Queen of Scots, was Elizabeth I's cousin queen. In Scotland, she ruled during the reign of Elizabeth and the two were similar in age. Mary was born in 1542 while Elizabeth was born in 1533. Her mother was the French noblewoman Mary of Guise, the daughter of a duke, and her father was Scotland's King James V. James was a Stuart, and the Stuarts have been on the Scottish throne for a few generations. By now, Mary's paternal grandmother, so her father's mom, was Margaret Tudor, Henry VIII's older sister. When she was born, Henry VIII was already on the throne for 33 years and was 51 years old. He was on his sixth and final wife, Catherine Parr, and his daughter Elizabeth was nine. Mary inherited the throne when she was six days old. Her father, King James V, died suddenly while on a military campaign against Henry VIII's England. James's mother, Margaret Tudor, so Henry's sister, just died in 1541, a year before Mary was born. And this cancelled any peace between Scotland and England. So Henry went to war against them and James died from either grief from losing a battle or a fever. Mary was six days old and she had two regents. First, her current successor, 30-year-old Earl of Arran, from 1542 to 1554. Then her mother, Mary of Guise, overtook that regency and became Mary's regent until her death in 1560, when Mary was 17. Henry VIII wanted to marry his son Edward to Mary of Scots in hopes for a union between Scotland and England, and this was called Henry's rough wooing because he tried to use force and begun a series of raids in Scotland. For Mary's sake, she was constantly moved around castles for her safety. Through her mother's connections with France, who was Catholic just like Scotland, France agreed to provide troops to help defend against the English in return for the young queen to marry the Dauphin of France, and that was agreed upon. So for 13 years she lived in the French court because it was safer there than in Scotland where you had both England and the Scottish Protestants as a threat against the Catholic queen. Remember, England just had their Protestant Reformation, and so Scotland was kind of having their own version of that, too. So Mary had her whole childhood in the safety of France. When she was 15, she married the Dauphin and became Queen Consort of France a year later. Mary had a small oval head, a long neck, brown hair and eyes, arched brows, a pale skin, and a high forehead. She was also 5'11", which was attractively tall. She also had charisma that would lure people to her. What also gave Mary strength and posed a threat to Protestant England was her claim to the English throne. In the eyes of the Catholics, Elizabeth was illegitimate, which I mentioned more on that in my video on her and her sister Bloody Mary, and they considered Mary of Scots as the rightful Catholic queen of England. This is because after Elizabeth, through her grandmother Margaret Tudor, she is the eldest descendant of Henry VII and could restore Catholicism. In 1560, when she was 17, both her mom and her husband died. France was having its own problems and could no longer support Scotland as much anymore. Mary now had to return to her native land to tend to its wounds, which she was unfamiliar with, having been so far away. Elizabeth, now queen for two years, hopes that having a relative on the throne would keep Scotland stable and protect her own position. Elizabeth is impressed that Mary was received with a warm welcome. Catholic Mary tolerated the Protestants and even appointed Protestant leaders. Mary quickly remarried her first cousin, Lord Darnley. Darnley and Mary's marriage began to go toxic. He wanted more power than a king consort, and he even killed her favorite servant in front of her when she was pregnant. Mary begins to reach out to Elizabeth for help 
to protect her and her son from her abusive husband. Though Mary was Queen of Scotland, Darnley was hugely influential and upsetting him could threaten her own crown. Without anyone's approval, a faction of Mary's supporters rose up and killed Darnley. Elizabeth is horrified to learn that Mary is planning now to marry the man accused of Darnley's murder, Lord Bothwell. Elizabeth pleads to Mary not to marry him, but it falls on deaf ears. Mary marries Bothwell. Elizabeth was appalled because they were looked on as sister queens. How could she marry the man accused of murdering her husband? And to Elizabeth, what affects one queen shadows onto the other. So what would that say about Elizabeth? In short, this proved very unpopular. They were overthrown and their marriage torn apart. Bothwell was exiled north and Mary was forced to abdicate for her one-year-old son James. Mary escaped her imprisonment and fled south to England that same year in 1568. She was 26. She wanted to seek sanctuary and get Elizabeth's help to restore her Scottish crown. Mary's throne was the least of Elizabeth's worries though, as her presence in England makes her an attractive prospect for a Catholic uprising. Elizabeth's advisors employ her to execute Mary as quickly as possible, and this puts Elizabeth in a bind. If she doesn't execute, the threat stays, but if she does, the dramatic means could lead to an end to her own reign. Mary is kept under house arrest for 18 years, but soon Elizabeth can see Mary is becoming a romanticized icon for the Catholic resistance. Mary keeps getting more and more sympathy from the public despite her reputation. She also claims she wants to retire in peace, but nobody buys it. In 1586, age 43, she was accused of plotting to assassinate Elizabeth. Elizabeth doesn't want to sign her execution warrant, but in her darkest hour, she does. But she almost immediately regrets her decision and calls it back, saying, It was a mistake, and I wasn't thinking straight, and I didn't know what it was. But it was too late. Her ministers proceeded with it so fast. Mary died in 1587. She was 44. In the aftermath, there's a huge Catholic uprising, and this leads to King Philip II of Spain, so Bloody Mary's husband, to take on England with the famous Spanish Armada. Mary's son stays King of Scotland and eventually inherits the crown of England once Elizabeth passes. And so that's a little bit about Mary, a heroic victim in a dramatic tragedy. So I hope you enjoyed this video, thank you for watching, subscribe for more historical recreations, and let me know in the comments who you want to see in real life, and I will see you in the next one.